20 ноября 2011 года в Москве на арене спортивного комплекса Олимпийский состоялся грандиозный международный турнир M1 Global, в главном бою вечера которого Федор Емеляенко бился с Джеффом Монсоном. Карт турнира был переполнен крутыми боями, но буквально за несколько дней до турнира один из бойцов получил травму, и без соперника остался ветеран UFC, француз Ксавье Фо Папакам, по прозвищу Профессор Икс, у которого к тому времени за плечами было 37 профессиональных поединков. В срочном порядке были организованы поиски оппонента, но выйти на коротком уведомлении против столь опытного спортсмена вызвался только молодой боец Альберт Дураев, который являлся чемпионом России и призером Кубка мира по боевому сам, а также победителем фестиваля боевых искусств единств. В смешных единоборствах Альберт на тот момент провел 4 боя и во всех праздновал победу. На поединок он выходил без какой-либо специальной подготовки, но для него это был огромный шанс заявить о себе в мире смешных единоборств, и Альберт был готов сделать все для победы над грозным оппонентом. Этот бой стал большим шагом на пути молодого спортсмена, который в будущем обретет боевое прозвище Мачете и станет чемпионом ACB в двух весовых категориях. Меня зовут Альберт Дураев, я боец из Чеченской Республики, города Грозного. Уступаю за клуб Волгоград Файт. Я настроен на победу и постараюсь показать достойный бой. My name is Xavier Fupapukan. I'm the Professor X. I'm fighting out of the Snake Team from France. People know about my Muay Thai, and tonight I'm gonna use all my wrestling skills and all my Jiu-Jitsu skills. It's punishment time! This fight is scheduled for three, five, and eight rounds in the M1 Global Middleweight Division. Introducing first the man standing to my left and fighting out of the blue corner. He stands 186 centimeters, 6 feet, 1 inch tall. His official weight 83.7 kilograms, 184 and 1 half pounds. His record 21 victories, opposite 16 defeats. Joining us from France, Xavier Professor X. His opponent stands across the ring to my right and fights out of the ring corner. He stands 182 centimeters, 5 feet 10 inches tall. His official weight 82.7 kilograms, an even 182 pounds. His professional record perfect at 4 and 0. Join us from Bogograd, Russia. Three rounds, five minutes. You both know the rules. Listen to my command. Protect yourself all time. Mind to head, mind to groan. Make it a good fight. Shake hands, step back to your corner. The men in charge, Marco Bronson, giving the final instructions for our combatants in the ring. In the red corner, it is going to be Albert Durav. He's in the green trunks, taking on Xavier Fopa Pokam, and he is in the black trunks. Again, a Muay Thai expert in Pokam taking on the Sambo, master in combat Sambo, Albert Durav. 22 years of age is Durav. On the other hand, Pokam highly experienced with a record of 21 wins and 16 losses. And good striking skills right off the bat by Durav. And Jeremy, he found his mark right off the bat. Now let's see if Pokam can go ahead and control himself. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like uh, Xavier was looking for a slower pace start, and uh, position, Albert uh, position, didn't want to have any of that. He came right at him swinging bombs. And right away now, the referee, Marco Brosen, bringing him away from the ropes, as is the custom here. And look at right around that, Durov trying to go one of his Sambo moves right off the bat. Yeah, he's looking for that triangle choke early, but uh, Xavier did a good job of posturing up out of that and landed a few shots on his way back in. Xavier now trying to go ahead and get to that full guard position right there to go ahead and try to do his work. And you can see, you can sense that Dura is very comfortable from there. He's got a lot of different options that he's able to go ahead and use. Great the way he uses his legs. Yeah, I think uh, Xavier is still trying to shake the cobwebs out a little bit. I think a few of those punches early on might have hurt him. It looks like he's getting his wits back to him now. He's starting to get busy with some shots of his own. And Jeremy, this is a good move here by Xavier because he's able to go ahead and recuperate a little bit, get his his win back and get his bearings back after taking those shots from Durov. And I, I think he knows now he does not want to exchange with Durov on an upright position. 
Well, he, he at least needs to be aware that uh, Dryev is going to be coming hard with anything he does and take that into account. So what can, what can Pokem right here do to get a better position from where he's at right now? Uh, generally, you want to try to pass the guard from a position like this, uh, like he's trying to do now. He's got that knee through the middle, and he's looking to, to split the legs and come through, where you can do a little more damage and, uh, and you know, progress further in the fight. Dryev did a great job of uh, stopping him there. It looks like he's just really looking to tie him up now, though. And this crowd now started to get into it. And I tell you what, I was amazed, as you were too, Jeremy, to find these people that before this event even started, like an hour and a half before, it was totally packed, up to the rafters already, anticipating this great event. Pokem now back on top. But you see Durov with those legs preventing Pokem from getting any more advantageous position than what he's got right now. Although he's trying to work that elbow now under the chin of Durov. Yeah, I think Durov is uh, content to stay on the ground uh, and look for submissions. Uh, and uh, he might have the arm. He's got the arm. He's got an arm bar. Great move right there by Durov. And he's going to hang on to that. He's, he's also got him around his neck. He's going to snap that. Tremendous flexibility on the yeah, part of incredible. Pokem. I would have sworn that that arm was already broken, but he didn't even grimace. Uh, he's got the most flexible arms I've ever seen. He's back on top now and, and making him pay for that arm lock attack. What a way to start the evening with this particular fight. Again, five minute rounds. Now looking to return the favor going after an arm lock of his own. And you can tell Durov, this took a lot of energy out of him. Yeah, I did. I'm sure he put everything he had into that arm lock. He thought he had it as did everybody in the crowd. You sense that all of a sudden now, he's been depleted of some of the fuel in that tank right there. Whereas Pokem now using his experience, using that elbow now trying to find his mark on the head. Yeah, he definitely uh, looks like he uh, was worn out a little bit too. Those aren't the strongest shots. I'm still amazed. I thought that arm was gonna be broken in three places, but no. Tremendous, tremendous dexterity, flexibility. And now Pokem now raining down on Durayev. And boy, those will give you some Excedrin headaches right there. Definitely, definitely. Uh, Albert's got to do something to get out of here. He's uh, he's just trying to tie up the hands, and that's not gonna it's not gonna stall uh, Xavier for long. So you see now the clock down there, counting down to under 30 seconds. Poke him and re miraculous, miraculous recovery. That way he was able to go ahead and fend off what looked like sure to be a broken arm. And now he is he's landing those shots. Landed shots from raining on Durayev is Pokem. Trying to get past that guard is Pokem. Now look at him, let's see if he's, no he's not, he's not able to get it. Very close, trying to go after an arm lock of his own right at the bell. And there goes the bell. Very smart tactic, waiting to the last few seconds to grab that arm lock. And again, this is a very, it's, it's going to be a problem here tonight because we can't hear the bell. And I don't think the referee can hear that well, and I think that, I think that went 10 seconds past the end of the round, so we'll see. How would you score that first one there, Jeremy? Here's some of the action. And that was at the very beginning, when yeah. all of a sudden Dura was able to land those shots, and all of a sudden Dura now gets the arm. And right here, it looks like it was gonna break in three places. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I've never seen an arm that flexible. I thought it had already broken, the way that arm was bent. We'll see how he uh, does in the second round with that left arm. See if he's gonna be able to use it like he did in the first. So how would you score that first round? Uh, I, I think I would have given that round to Durov. He, uh, he got, you know, he got the knockdown and he came real close to submitting him with that uh, arm lock. He did end up finishing the round um, being mounted, but uh, Xavier wasn't landing anywhere near the, the kind of shot that he would need to. Uh, okay, now I'm gonna go the other way. I thought Xavier did enough, in my opinion, but then that's the beauty of it. We got three judges, it's subjective, and they've got three different angles. 
So the difference in opinion. Again, that's what makes MMA what it is, and that's what makes fighting what it is. You got three different judges on a subjective position. They got five minutes to go ahead and decide who wins that particular round. So we are ready for round number two of a Schedule three rounder Your principals in the ring, they are. Xavier Popa. Pokum, he is in the black trunks, taking out Albert Duraev. He is in the green, the 22-year-old from Volgograd. Pokum from Paris, France. And let's see now, Pokum can go back to start to kick, to use his Muay Thai. Looks like Albert is already getting a little tired. He's starting to throw one punch at a time and dropping his hands a lot when he's done. Yeah, he looks like he's just kind of bobbing around right now. So let's see if Duraev Going for the takedown is Pokum. He has Durev on his back. Maybe looking to uh, get back to the mound, try to finish what he started in the first round. So here we are back in that same place. So let's see if Durev now can go ahead. And again, last time he was able to go ahead and get that arm when Pokum got a little lax and he was able to go ahead and get that. Yeah, I wonder if he's going to want to go back to that though with... Uh, you know, with the last one he had, he had it completely stretched out. He did everything he wanted to do, and uh, his arm was just too flexible. So I wonder if he's going to be a little shy going back to it again. Referee Marco Brosa now bringing the fighters both back up again. This ring, 20 by 20. And what I love about these rings, it's so easy for the fans to see. Yeah, definitely. The, uh, the ring definitely affords a, a good viewpoint for the crowd. Back on the ground they go. Pokem on top. And Durov now trying to slide that arm. As far as energy, who's using the most amount of energy right now? Uh, I would think uh, Durov trying to hold him down. He knows uh, being on the bottom, he knows he's going to take more abuse if he starts throwing punches. So uh, he's trying to hold Xavier down and uh, and I would guess get a stand up. Xavier now working that elbow, trying to get that elbow underneath the chin of Durov. And there's that elbow. Now he gets that elbow underneath the chin. Now he's looking for the knee on the stomach, trying to transition to the mound. And Durayev does a good job of getting his knee back in the middle there and, and uh, pushing him away. And that's that Sambo training on the part of Durayev. Falling up the shoulder again, looking for that arm lock, or at least to recover the guard. All you had to do is remember that first round and know how important flexibility happens to be. And now you see him all set, trying try to get that arm. As Zavia tried to pass and got around it, but got his leg caught. Got caught by the legs up there. Uh, and he got... They're trying to break... There it is. He stopped it. Couldn't quite see from this angle, but it looked to me like Xavier might have tapped to that triangle. I couldn't see it from that vantage point that we had, so we apologize that I've been able to call it quite that quickly, but definitely Durev again, showing that ability as a Sambo, combat Sambo fighter. And let's take a look at the replay. I'm anxious to see this, and Jeremy, please take it from the very beginning and break it down. So now the crowd now loving it as their man from Volgograd gets an impressive win over Alba Durev. And I think you called it on the button. No, dude, F Pokum looked like he was tired, Jeremy. He looked like he, you know, he was kind of, I mean, that took a lot out of him in that, that first round and didn't quite have that energy he needed, that, that stamina to be able to withstand what Durev was going to go ahead and bring. Yeah, I, I was surprised to see uh, primarily a Muay Thai fighter shooting for takedowns in the second round. I wonder if that arm was bugging him more than he let on. So now let's go to Mike Markham to give us the official time and the decision. This bout ends at 2 minutes 40 seconds of the second round. We have a tap out. Your winner by submission via triangle choke in the right corner, Albert Durayev. And there you have your winner, Albert Durayev.
Two minutes, 40 seconds of the second round. Uh, Xavier Fopopocam tapping out. <laughs>